Hi guys, MedievalFan over 7 back again today and I'm starting a new Let's Play of a PS1 game that I've actually done a long play of on this channel, a Toy Story 2 Buzz Lightyear to the Rescue and it's actually my, funnily enough, that long play is actually my most, most viewed video on this channel and I actually have no idea why in comparison to other long plays. I've done other games uh, that are by Disney and everything and this one just gets a lot more views in comparison to the rest which I'm very appreciative of to be honest actually and I actually am very glad you all enjoy it so much and it must have touched a lot of hearts and <laughs> their childhoods and everything but uh, uh, a couple of people actually um, asked if I could do some uh, commentated Let's Plays of this game since I never commentated my long play. And to be honest, I actually have uh, thought myself I should be doing some commentaries for games that I long played a year or a couple of years ago. Um, and I'm glad that some people agreed to that. It sort of reinforced me wanting to do it. Now, I'm feeling a bit sad because I actually did just do a Let's Play of this just now, but my commentary never recorded, so I'm a bit pissed off. So I hope I re it as enthusiastic as I did just now. But, um,. Yeah, I was just saying how when I was just playing through it all again, it's just, it's hard to believe it's been over a year since I last played it, but funnily enough, I did seem to forget it, like, a fair bit, but, uh, yeah, I was feeling quite nostalgic seeing all these little title sequences again, and little things in the level, and, uh, oh, here we go, I'm hoping to actually do some Let's Plays of other games that I've long played as well, with commentary, including A Bug's Life, which I'm actually hoping to do with my mum at some point, because we both played that a lot last summer, and, um, yeah, we both really enjoy that games. I thought she was wanting to join me in like some videos at some point, and well, she wasn't wanting to, but well, she didn't say she didn't want to, but I asked her if she wanted to, and she said yeah, if that makes sense. But um, yeah, we're just gonna start the game now with our first level, Andy's house. Now I am um, so sorry. I I already done this level already, so I hope I can say everything I said before. And uh, yeah, for the first four levels, five levels, sorry, are probably like, the most nostalgic to me because they're the only levels I ever really played when I was younger, and. Um, I can never get past Alleys and Gullies, uh, but uh, also I kind of prefer the soundtracks to early on levels too because I'm not sure if it's just doing nostalgia of it, also because I think I just prefer early on levels. They have a more cheery tone to them and they sound much more jazzy and everything, whereas their own ones sound a bit more electric and dull and more intense and everything, but uh, I like the early on soundtracks. I like some of the later on soundtracks, they're pretty good, but some of them can be quite creepy like Alice Penthouse, but yeah, we'll just get straight into the game now, Andy's House. Our first level in the game, I'll have to skip these cutscenes, I'm sorry, just, I probably won't get my video flagged because of it, but just in case I do, I'm just not going to include the cutscenes in my video, but, uh, here we go, loading level 1, press X, now it's loaded, and that's Andy's house, and I think in the GameCube version of this game, it's actually the instrumental version of You've Got a Friend in Me that actually plays this level, it's not actually this soundtrack, this soundtrack actually goes to ending credits, but, um, all the rest of the levels in this game actually have, um, the PS1 soundtracks and the... Did I say GameCube version? I meant to say N64. Or is it GameCube a character member? But, um... What was I going to say just there? Uh, but they switched around the soundtrack for Bombs Away and Slime Time in the Nintendo 64 version or whatever platform it was on, I can't remember. But, uh, I was just seeing this point here, actually, how... I remember uh, back when I had my old uh, Let's Play channel that got terminated, uh, PSX Mad 146, and I used to watch Let's Plays by this guy called Supersonic, and I got so nostalgic on watching his Let's Plays, he did it off his PSP, and he's so adorable and chirpy and happy in his Let's Plays and everything, and they were really fun to watch, and it just kind of reminded me in this game, and I just really wanted to get it again, but I uh, never got it till like two years later, because I asked to put it on my Christmas list and everything like that for my birthdays and such, and I just never got it, so uh, when I actually had some Christmas money to spare last year, uh, in 2015, I just bought this game on Amazon and did a Let's Play of it, long play of it for you. And I was so nostalgic of playing it again and playing the first four levels, but that long play was actually pretty much blind because I hadn't played it past episode f le level five, so that's that. But let's talk a bit more about the game right now. I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit sidetracked. But yeah, these little blocks up here uh, just give you little hints in every level, ones with wrecks and question marks on it. It says, you can jump onto zip lines to slide down them. Press jump to let go of them. Uh, the lines, there, there we go. So there's, uh, that battery we just collected there, that counts as like recharging your batteries technically because we're like a toy, which is quite a cool touch I think, because that's like a new uh, bit of health for us, like a life to top up. And uh, like in every <laughs> Disney game in my opinion, they give you like a lot of lives in every uh, Disney game that you end up not using half of because they give you so many, there's like so many lives in this level as well. But uh, also fun of fun is, oh we'll see, we'll see this here. You can target your laser by using your vision, visor view. Press the L1 button to activate the view, then press the R1 button to swap between visible targets, then press fire to use your laser. Use it to shoot the catches holding up the side of the crib. Oh, I'm not sure I've got a lot of things about this level actually to scare me, not this level, just this game in general. Like, for example, his face and reflection of 
this aimer here. That used to scare me, and also the some of the dialogue used to scare me when I was younger. Like when you heard people in level, when you were near them, you used to always shout random dialogues like, "Hey, Buzz!" and everything. I used to always think it sounded creepy and quite taunting to be honest. And, uh, I'll quite explain the one we come up to in a second with uh, T Rex. He used to scare me a lot when I was younger because I didn't actually know it was T Rex shouting on us. I thought it was like Andy shouting in agony, like help me and everything. I thought it was someone screaming for help and like 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 quite intense help. I don't mean like they're just needing a hand or something, but um. Also, as much a bit laser, like, you only, f like, add, like, little tiny hits if you just fire red ones like that, but if you hold down the, the square button and then let go, you fire, like, a yellow laser, which gets a bit more of a powerful attack, but then if you collect a green one later on, which isn't permanent, but you get a green laser that is much more powerful than the red laser, and also you just have to press square rather than hold it down to use it, but it runs out eventually, so you have to use it quite sparingly. You don't have to defeat every enemy in these levels, uh, you only have to defeat enough to get 50 coins, and that means you also don't have to get all the coins either. Because once you've got 50 coins, you've got enough to give to Ham, and you get a pizza plant token from him. And yes, the pizza plant tokens are the collectibles in this game. Uh, we get 5 in each level, and it goes towards level completion. I'm not sure what it goes towards. Like, I think it unlocks cutscenes every time you collect every pizza plant token. But uh, yeah, in every Destiny game, you get some sort of reward for collecting everything in each level. Like in a Bugs Life, you unlock a cutscene. I think that's it. But um, yeah, here's our first boss up in the attic in this game. I remember... Uh, I used to s struggle finding my way around this level when I was younger. It's the first level in the game and it's not really that hard now when you're re playing back through it. But when I was a kid, this part used to really confuse me to be honest. A lot of the earlier levels actually did used to make me stuck and I used to get really stuck in Alice and Gullies. Which is really weird because there's actually no technical point where you can actually leave the level. You can just like exit level at any point and then you just go to the menu and you can just go to the next level. But I don't know why I never figured out when I was younger, but I can never get past Alice and Gullies when I was younger. So, yeah, in every level there's a little mission for us to do uh, for a certain person. We have to collect five other things, and we have to do like a race in each level. We have to, not on every level we have to get something for Mr. Potato Head, but there's some levels we have to get something for him. We have to get 50 coins for Ham in every level. There's always a secret one in every level, and uh, I'll talk to you about it as we go along. But in this level we have to get five sheep for Mrs. Bo Peep. And um, she gets really butthurt and annoyed if you don't give her to them fast enough, because as soon as you go into the kitchen she'll say, Hey, buzz, every two seconds. And that used to annoy me when I was younger, because it used to take me forever to find her, because I used to take so long to play this game when I was younger, because, well, any game really, because games are a lot harder when you're younger for some reason. And also, they seem a lot wider open and imaginative when you're younger. Like, you seem much more fascinated by games when you're younger. And this game reminds me a lot of my earlier childhood years, because back when I was, like, 9 or 10, uh, back when I just moved into my house before this one, which I lived in for like 11 years of my life. But shortly after we moved in, my sister broke it by stepping on it by accident and I never got it again until like last year. So, yeah, I don't remember much of it from a later childhood and going through high school and that. But, uh, yeah, it's still a very nostalgic game for me to play. It brings back like, lots of memories. I still have like lots of memories from when I was like really young playing this game. Uh, but yeah, here is our first boss. Uh, defeat the tin robot to get a token. So technically, yeah, we just have to keep dodging his attacks until he gets uh, tired, and then we zap him with a laser. And um, I remember, like, Zipersonic was quite informative when he did his Let's Play to this, and I wish I was much better Let's Play, but I get so anxious and nervous when I do my Let's Plays, and I'm just sorry about my lack of enthusiasm right now, I'm just redoing it all again, it's just, oh my god. I was actually very enthusiastic with doing my Let's Play a minute ago, I felt so nostalgic doing it all again, I was like, it's quite good to play back through it all again for you guys, it's quite nice to relive the adventure that I did for you last uh, February, and actually talk about it this time. Like, sharing my view of the game with you. It's actually a very good game, to be honest. The controls are very good. Uh, the music's really great. The, the levels are fun to play as well. But I'd say the character models look a bit goofy, to be honest. Uh, particularly the actual faces. Like, if you look at Buzz, he looks really scary. I mean, like, the character's face is actually just given a jungle because he looked so weird. Like, the way they never moved, they always looked so constipated and everything. But uh, you keep on playing. That's just got our first piece of planet token of the game. It's technically the one that would be our last one, according to how they're lined up after level. But that's us uh, defeat the boss and got our piece of planet token for defeating the boss. There's a boss in every level in this game, I think, actually. And we get a piece of planet token for defeating them. But yeah, let's just zoop down this. So in every level, pretty much, we have to do something to earn a piece of planet token, and there's just one on the list that we have to find somewhere in the house. So let's take the hint from uh, T-Rex in this level. He'll say, listen to this, when we walk into him. Well, Peep has lost her sheep. She is on the table in the kitchen. I think he says more than one thing, actually. He'll give you a hint for everything. Yeah, there we go. RC car is waiting to race you around the garage. He is through the hole in the door downstairs. Yeah, so that race downstairs is a complete hazard. That the garage is full of little uh, gears and 
rapid saws and everything, which is quite <laughs> graphic for a kids game because I know we're just a toy, so we're not going to get any blood gushing out if we get cut by one. But just to think if a kid started playing with stuff like that, he would just start gushing blood and everything, and he'll be need to rush to the hospital if he was playing with all this through here. I mean, look. See all those little spinning sharp stuff? I don't even know what it's called. Call me dumb. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, we've got 23 coins now. We just need uh, 27 more. Is it? I'm not really doing that. But yeah, uh, you back off. <laughs> See, like, if we hold down square, you'll notice it just takes one hit to defeat them, but you may have noticed it took me a few hits to defeat them with the green one. I guess one's flying this with them, we have to jump to get him, because we'll never fire in a straight line, he won't fire upwards, unless we aim, of course. Also, I was pointing out earlier when I was playing this out, actually, I thought all these little things lying on the ground, like like liquids and that, used to all hurt you, but some of them don't. But there are some that actually do hurt you in the game, like goo down in the basement and that, but yeah, here's our first race in the game with RC. Not all the races in this game are actually of RC, funnily enough, when I was just remembering that earlier. There's actually a race in every level, but they don't all consist of RC. I think there's like two or three races of RC, but um, yeah, we have to beat him in three laps. And uh, he'll give us a pizza to plant token if we win. So get ready to race. Three, two, one, go! Oh, I will kill him in a second, but one cool trick I actually noticed um, that you can do in this challenge to ensure a win is that... He tends to bump off you if he runs into your back, so just make sure you're directly in front of him throughout the whole race and he'll just keep bumping off of you the whole time and he'll never get in front of you. But, um, see that's pretty cool, he just sort of like reflects well, he sort of backs off a little when he bumps into you. And this race is actually pretty easy in comparison to others in Andy's Neighbourhood, I'm not going to get out of point, but uh, I believe he actually goes a lot faster in Andy's Neighbourhood, which is why you have to unlock the, the speed boots. Back off. <laughs> Uh, which is actually a level we have to backtrack to later, and I was meaning to mention, in this level we do not have to backtrack, we'll be doing this all in one setting, so that's uh, very good. Uh, I think there's only two levels in this game you actually have to backtrack to, which is Andy's Neighbourhood and um, Alleys and Gullies. And we have to actually backtrack after we've got the speed boots for uh, doing that challenge in, uh, um, what's it called, Andy's Neighbourhood. And um, yes, that's almost defeated RC car, I hope he doesn't rush past this last minute, but yes we bet him. So that's got a piece of planet token for beating him. Honestly, I actually do, I do really love this game, but I'm just feeling so enthusiastic after just straight playing this game, and I just noticed it never recorded my commentary for some reason. But I'm sorry if I completely ruined it. But I'm trying to do it as best I can. I'm so sorry. I'm so so sorry. I don't mean to be rude to you or anything, but um, yeah, the, this game actually looks really good for kids' game. And I was actually meaning to mention earlier that this uh, reminded me a lot in another game I used to play when I was younger, which is Stuart Little 2. Uh, just the way the obstacles look and the levels are laid out, they just remind me a lot in how Stuart Little was done. And that's a game I never actually completed when I was younger. I might do a long play and some let's plays that at some point if I don't get frustrated while playing it. Because I remember that game used to be very hard and I could never complete that when I was younger. But maybe now that I'm older it might not be as hard. And after seeing Cadicorus actually um, reviewing it and he didn't seem to find the game that bad to be honest, I actually might give it another go to be honest. And I was also to point out earlier on when I get very nervous and anxious I say to be honest a lot. So I'm sorry about that. I even say to be honest when it's not relevant. But um. Oh, also, you don't actually have to work your way around here completely to make your way up here. You can actually just jump on this cup, and then you can jump your way up onto this light here, and that was a complete fail. But you can jump on this cup, and uh, if he just does it, there we go. There you go, you can reach your way up there without having to actually work your way around. But there's also another way to get up without working your way around, which I'll show you in just a moment. And that was the... I was just a coin, I think I got there, yeah. And we've got another life. I think there's three lives in this level. We've got two of them so far. But uh, yeah, we'll just collect these coins here. And there's just... Actually, I might just... If I fall here, I'll show you the other way you can get up without... Uh, yeah, oh no, we didn't fall, cool. But I'll show you anyway in a second. Um, so here, oh, there we go. It looks like a little wee green spike. If you pick up, you'll get a green laser in each level. And uh, I'm not going to try and waste it, but... Uh, um, pretty much, you have a limited amount of it. And that's that green bar down there, and it'll go down the more you use it. So, um... Oh, hold on, we'll just see this block here. If you jump at a horizontal bar, you will swing around on it. Press jump when you have left the bar to jump farther and higher. Oh yeah, okay, what I was meaning to mention here is, I used to get confused a lot when I played this part when I was younger. I used to keep double jumping onto these uh, poles. What you have to make sure is to not double jump because you'll jump too far and you'll just jump over it and fall down. So pretty much you have to jump just once, do not double jump, just press jump once and he'll just grab onto the ledge and then let go, jump once again and let go of the ledge instead of double jumping because he'll jump too far and he'll not actually make the jump because he'll go too far. So uh, just press X once and that's enough to make him grab onto the pole. Because I know it's easy to hesitate when you're playing games like this and you're going to worry that you won't reach a ledge and you'll press again just to ensure you reach it, but then you'll jump too far, I'm just letting you know that right now, so... <laughs> so that's just almost on this part of the level. This part... I don't remember this game actually being much harder last uh, February. Oh god, I can't believe it's been over a year since I played this. But I must have been just because I was playing it blind. That's the first time I played it in like ages last summer, so it's a bit, like... Uh, 
vague about it because I hadn't played it in so long, so I was probably a bit rusty. That's the, that's the, that's the word I was thinking of there. But um, I was a bit rusty when playing this earlier, actually. I was kind of failing at it. I was like, oh, I did uh, get a bit more good luck in my long play. I did some things more in one go. But yeah, we just grab onto this spanner here. We just get new life for getting on here. But yeah, it comes down with us if we jump down, meaning that we don't actually have to... If we ever have to come back up here later, we won't have to work our way around again. We could just climb our way up this way. Because when we grabbed onto it, it pulled all the way down, meaning we could just climb our way back up. But what I was actually trying to show you here was, you can actually... There's another way to work your way up without having to climb your way around here. And there's also a way to climb up this car. You grab onto this car ledge, we just get it perfectly, and he's going to annoy me. Oh, die. There we go. Thanks, bitch, for me. But yeah, you can just grab onto this ledge here on the car if you just turn it perfectly. Hang on. Stop bumping onto the ledge through. Okay, just time straight. He, I actually managed to do it earlier on when I was recording, but uh, he will grab onto a ledge here, but he's just not seeming to do it right now. Uh, that's another thing I actually mean to point out about this game. It's actually very good in terms of controls. It's very smooth feeling, it's not too stiff, but in terms of grabbing ledges, he's not very good a lot of the time. He's very unpredictable. It's not very easy to determine whether or not he'll respond. And there we go, we grabbed onto it now. And then we can just sort of climb up the car this way by constantly jumping our way up. So there we go. That's another way you can get up if you don't want to work your way around passing all those obstacles. And uh, yep, we've pretty much done everything in this room we can now. So that's just done this little hazardous garage that no need to get seen to. It's a very hazardous house to be honest. I think this mum should be sued for like exposing her child to such dangerous hazards. But... <laughs> Um, there we go, let's go. We just need six more coins, so we'll be able to get that to Ham once we've got them. Um, and there's going to be six around here somewhere. And, uh, so that's technically like our training level. We haven't really got like official training level in this game, we just got an easy first level. Unlike in A Bug's Life, where you actually do get a training level, which is short with no enemies. Well, there's like, the occasional enemy, but it's just, it is actually a training level, it's called a training level, and it's really easy, there's no music to it or anything. But, uh, you can foot stomp where you see the stomp icon by pressing jump and then pressing spin while you are in the air. This will activate switches uh, and catapults and will also act as an attack. So yeah, spin that circle. Yeah, so if you jump and press spin, you'll stomp on that X there. That X um, uh, simulates that you have to hit that. So Oh, damn it. I thought I thought you actually never got a chance to attack there. But, uh, there we go, so we got that, we just have three more tokens to collect. I think I must have missed a couple of tokens this time round, because I think I had 50 by this point when I was playing it just a moment ago. But, um, yeah, I think there's probably some down the stairs here, we'll try and get these ones. Well, there's three right here, so we'll just get these and we'll go back upstairs to finish off the challenge upstairs. And I was meaning to point out, actually, when I was playing this game earlier, I actually did, I actually did point out earlier, but I just forgot to mention it just now. Um, that every time I play this game when I was younger, I've with a lot of games actually, I always make up my own little humming lyrics uh, to games. Just I don't know why, it just sort of came to my head. I would just always hum a random lyric to it and I used to go like, We're on a quest to find him, we are on a quest to save him, we are gonna find him, we're gonna save your pal Woody. I had really, really stupid lyrics, so I was really young when I said them. I probably wasn't even thinking when I said them, but um, probably just Asperger's Asperger, Asperger, how you coming out. Uh, Having all these random thoughts in my head and everything, but uh, yeah, I do have Asperger's in fact, but uh... Oh, well done, Buzz. Here it should be the planet token. So yeah, every time we've got enough for a certain person, that character's icon will start flashing in the corner. Like, you may have noticed Ham started flashing in the corner when we got enough coins. So we've got so got our a third piece of planet token again. No, we're not getting level yet, we've got two more left to get. And um... Yeah, so we'll just fit stomp on here. Boom, there we go. Oh no, we don't need to collect any more coins, and we don't actually need to defeat any more enemies unless they're in a way annoying us. Oh, and yes, in every level, well not every level, I think five levels, we have to collect a body part for uh, Mr. Potato Head, and there we go, now we've got that, he's starting to flash, so we have to give him uh, that ear. In every level, there's a different part, body part that's missing that we have to give him in return for a usable item uh, that will come useful in the current level, or levels that are on later, or ones you have to backtrack to. I uh, don't know why I collect those coins, I don't need them, but that's just got the third life in the game. I'm pretty sure there's only three lives in this level, but uh, there might be more. They're the only three I remember. But uh, there we go, we've got a third sheep now. And I got more lucky there than I did earlier. I kept falling at that part earlier because he wasn't grabbing onto ledges. But uh, that's just got the third sheep. And uh, we're not going to go into the kitchen yet because that's where the Bo Peep is, so it'll be more convenient to go there last. So we'll get the last sheep in the kitchen and just go straight to Bo Peep. So we'll go down into here now. And uh, oh, I actually pointed out in the let's play I just did just now, a way of uh, getting the sheep, which you may have actually seen in my long play, that you can actually get the sheep without having to worry about this whole zipliner challenge. Um, you can actually 
next from the third step, you can actually make it over to those sheep without having to actually use a zip liner. But yeah, I got lucky earlier on. I did in the first go, but I knew it would take me a couple of attempts this time. If you jump from like a third ledge and you get the camera angle right and you get a good leverage, you can actually make it over to that ledge without actually having to worry about using a zip liner. Ah, oh, there we go. I did actually get there, but again, the grab wasn't very determinable. Um, come on. Grab the ledge, I feel. Dun dun dun. Dun 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 dun. Oh, the music in this game is actually very contagious, to be honest. Like a lot of games from this era. I love a lot of games uh, from PS1. I love their soundtracks. But. Surprisingly, I was actually mentioning earlier that. The soundtracks in this game actually surprisingly stuck with me a fair bit considering I hadn't played it for like 11 years before I did my long play, but when I was doing my long play I found myself humming to it an awful lot, but, like along to the soundtrack, like almost like I remembered the soundtrack's rhythm, rhythm for rhythm, but honestly guys I'll, I'll do this for you honestly, I am so determined to get this right because I did it earlier and it's also quite a cool little cheat you can do and I'm not going to just say oh I'll take my word for it, I actually want to show you it can happen, but ah oh, for crying out loud, it's actually really annoying me, I just wish I could get this camera angle right. Instead of it just always going from the back angle because it's making me nervous. So I just don't like that camera angle, it's so unnerving. But so we'll try and do it from the third step again. Oh look at his face, it's so goofy. <laughs> we'll just jump over to the sheep again. And there we go. See I told you you don't need to do that whole zip liner part here. And then we could just get our fourth sheep. There's actually a way you can avoid getting that power up at all. And shut up Buzz, I'm talking. No time to lose! He used to always frighten me when I was younger, <laughs> when he used to just say, uh, no time to lose out of the blue, because he used to always say it so loudly and randomly, he used to always make me jump, but um, you can actually jump across this uh, liner like over and over, but it's a real challenge to do, and you're more likely not going to do that in your first go, but it is possible to actually do this level without the use of this power-up, and you can actually just jump across this goo and hurt yourself a little, and then therefore you get across without using the power-up, but we're just going to get the power-up as part of level completion. Wow, thanks Buzz. In return for finding my ear, I will let you use the Cosmic Shield. It will only protect you from harm for a little while, so make sure you use it wisely. So I'm pretty sure that returns at another point in the game. I think every power-up returns at least once or twice in the game. But because there's five power-ups in the game, there's like 20 levels. So yeah, there's quite a few levels to use them in. And I think every level requires a power-up to be used. So that's us used it. Now we can't jump very well when we're using it, so we'll just wait for it to run out before we jump on this ledge here. So yeah, it runs out of... Uh, usage when you use it for too long, but uh, <laughs> look at 2D those little, um, what are they called? Screws look. They start to turn with you as you turn, see? <laughs> it's funny. They all jump up here now. Yeah, the characters respawn in this game. Like, the enemies, if you defeat them and, and you return to where they were beforehand, they'll be back there again, but there's not much point in defeating them again unless they're in your way annoying you, because they only give you a coin once, but once you defeat them again, you get nothing for defeating them, so... This part in particular reminded me a lot in Stuart Little because this just reminded me so much in a level from it where there was like lots of goo and climbable areas that you climb up and uh, I don't know, this game just reminds me a lot in Stuart Little. Um, ah, there we go. I was much more fortunate with the ledge climbing this attempt than my first attempt. I'm so sorry actually that this is a complete fail of a let's play. I'm sorry I'm talking about it all the time as well. I just I just want you to know it's not like that I don't enjoy the game. I'm actually re I actually really do enjoy the game. It's just you know it's like whenever you play a game and you feel like everything went so well and it turns out it completely failed and I'm like, oh no, you just lose enthusiasm all of a sudden. But Yeah, this is our one loose um pizza plant token in the level up here. There we go, so I think someone pointed out in my let's but I can't remember what it was. Someone said that my shooting was really good at one point in the video that I can't remember if it was as good this time. I think it was back in the living room area where I shot a enemy like in one go with it with just a full on aim and shot him straight away. I didn't actually have to focus first. I just got lucky and just shot him straight away. But um I think someone else said that maiming in this game sucked, but I think he was joking he said, but uh, I don't know. Maybe maiming did suck. It's quite hard to play games later on, like in um Elevator hop. Oh my god, when I was playing that level for the first time last year, I'm sorry if I sucked at that level, guys. It was such a hard level, honestly. Uh, I think I actually replayed that level a lot to actually get it right, and I thought, you know, I'm not going to get any better at this level than this. So I'll just have to do. But uh, honestly, guys, that was not actually my worst attempt at that level. So, um, yeah, guys, that's us got the loose uh, pizza plant talking this level. So our last one is in the kitchen with Bo Peep. And oh my god, this level is making me feel so nostalgic right now. It's probably the most nostalgic level in the game to me, to be honest, because I... Uh, I don't know. 
I just found the music more memorable in this level, and also in that Andy's neighbourhood. It took me quite a while to get past that level, because that level's pretty tricky with how high the tree is and everything for climbing in there. I don't think I ever actually complete that level 100%, but I managed to get past it. I don't think I actually complete any of the levels, apart from this one, 100%, when I was younger. I just used to go past them without collecting everything. I wasn't much of a completionist when I was younger, but I sort of developed to want to become a completionist because I just used to think, oh no, I like to feel like I've been rewarded because I feel, well, I feel like I've made an effort when I play games and that, but... There we go, now we're in the kitchen with Bo Peep, and I actually used to think it was actually a boy talking. When I was younger here, I didn't actually know it was Bo Peep up there, uh, saying hey Buzz. I used to think it was a boy, but not a man, it was clearly not a man, but I used to think it was a boy shouting on this, but... No, it was actually Bo Peep, who is creepily turning in sync with us right now, without any animation, it's just turning. Oh, she's not looking at us now, she doesn't like us anymore, she doesn't want to see us now. But, uh, yet she is getting all butthurt because... Hi Buzz, please find my five missing sheep before I shit myself. Uh, when you find them, come back and see me for a pizza pie token. So yeah, she'll shout hey Buzz every two seconds, which gets really annoying after a while. But uh, <laughs> Because she is so freaking impatient that she can't just wait for me to save her sheep. She's like, oh, save my sheep already. I can't, like, not only you're not getting them yourself, you lazy cow, but you're being very pushy and naggy for me to get them fast enough. And I think they, I don't think they actually hurt you though, so little splurts of water come in the pot, do they? No, they don't, uh, but I think they hurt you as they hit you, but once they're actually on the counter, they don't hurt you because you decide on them. And I was just saying when playing this, I was thinking, <laughs> oh my god, this kitchen really needs to get seen to. They need to show a gas man that they need to call in Scottish gas to get that fixed. Exactly. I don't think that's normal. I don't think the uh, rings should have a mind of their own like that, like the hobs and everything. So, uh, Also, they should keep Andy away from that. It's very hazardous for children to be around. And also, Yes, yeah, so you do hurt yourself if you jump on top of that steam on that coffee urn. I, I, what the hell did I go up there for? I actually made the mistake of going up there by accident earlier too. That's so stupid of me. But I actually wasn't sure if you would hurt yourself if you jumped in that urn because it just looked like a very unreachable place. But yeah, you do hurt yourself if you get caught in that steam. Yes, the others. Not much point in defeating the enemies from this point. Either we got all the coins. But yeah, if they're in your way like this. Yeah, just kill them to get them out of your way. And I've still got like half of a bar of... Uh, laser left, which uses up a lot more later on in the game, but yeah, they give you plenty of it to use, which is very fair. So, when I was younger, I actually never thought to, like, when you do this part here, there's no way to reach over here without stomping on it first, because you get more leverage if you stomp on it, which I never figured out when I was younger, because I was stupid, so. <laughs> and this is our last sheep in the level. Every level we have to cut five items for a certain person, and that's got five sheep for Bo Peep. And she'll be very happy now. She'll stop saying, hey, Buzz, every two seconds. She says, thanks, Buzz. <laughs> looks, like, looks like blood on top of that uh, mop there is. Um, Andy been stabbing, stuff, or Sid been around stabbing toys, I don't know. But he, Shut up, I'll give you your sheep now. There you go, you're welcome. Sorry. <laughs> and the next level we'll be playing is Andy's Neighbourhood, and that's, you can see right there, actually. <laughs> you can see the scenery of Andy's Neighbourhood there. Nassus has got all five tokens in Andy's house. That was actually surprisingly fun to play back through again, to be honest. <laughs> it was, I said to be honest again there. I'm so sorry, guys. But uh, I think it's just a very nostalgic game to play no matter how often I play it. Luckily, I do really enjoy these games from my childhood. I could play them, like, endlessly. But it's just like replaying something straight after you've already played it. It's just that sometimes you want a break before playing it again. But yeah, Asus got everything in Andy's house. To infinity. And beyond. To infinity and beyond all oh, these little things make me nostalgic from playing it again. All these little quotes. All these little quotes actually used to scare me when I was younger when you heard characters talking in every level. This is scare me like either sound like they were screaming in agony for some reason. But yeah, even these little sequences here are very nostalgic to me. I'm keep talking about nostalgia all the time. I'm such a nostalgia blinded freak. But to be honest, I think this game is just generally fun to play, to be honest. It's a very heartwarming distracting game to play if you just want to distract yourself from stress as a reality it's just a very fun game to play very good for children very good for leading to the imagination and such very colorful very fun for children to play and very fun for them to actually figure out as well even if they don't complete 100 percent it'll be very easy for them to get past levels um so yeah let's just point out every achievement we got here we got a pizza plant token for getting 50 coins for ham we got a pizza plant token for getting five uh, of whole peeps sheep and we got a piece of token for doing the race with RC, the hidden one which was in the uh, basement on top of all those little uh, ledges and doing the zipliner stuff. And for the boss, uh, the robot boss. So we've got our first uh, power up which is the invincibil invincibility shield. Uh, we get five power ups in the game, so yeah, uh, there'll be five levels where we collect a new power up. I think the next one we get is not actually the speed boots. We unlock that later on in the game, but uh, 
yeah guys next time we'll be playing Andy's Neighborhood where I hope I'm a bit more enthusiastic I'm sorry you can even see here that I just played it like but still I had a, I actually had a lot of fun replaying through that again but uh there we go we'll save the game and next time we'll be playing Andy's Neighborhood and I was just meaning to mention there when you saw that save file of 100 Dalmatians I've actually attempted several 100 Dalmatian Let's Plays over the past year to be honest I've tried doing them since last summer but I just feel like they kept going wrong so many things were just yeah, going wrong, like I said. So I just kept thinking, no, I'll try again some other time. But, uh, <laughs> I've also been meaning to do a third long play, because the other two, to be honest, I found kind of sucked for their own reasons. I'm just a bit of a perfectionist, to be honest. I feel like so many things go wrong on my channel, I just want to improve things every time. But, yeah, more to the point, that's been Andy's house. I've had a lot of fun replaying back to that for you, surprisingly. I thought I'd have gotten stressed and lacked enthusiasm replaying through that again for you. But, uh, yeah, next time, let's hope that Andy's neighbourhood goes more swimmingly, that I'll get it all done in one thing. But, yeah, something that I was actually pointing out uh, when I first recorded just there that they never actually changed the spelling of neighbourhood in the UK because you know how like in America colours spell like C-L-O-L-O-U-R and neighbourhood is like O-U-R, so I meant in the UK, in America they don't include the O-U in colours like C-O-L-O-R but in games like Spyro 2 they sort of change the spellings for the UK versions of that but yep next time we'll be playing Andy's Neighbourhood and maybe Bombs Away as well, I think that's the boss that's after that level because it's quite a short level so um yeah guys thank you very much for watching, I love you all and uh I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned for the next part, and uh, I don't know when it'll be, but uh, I hope to do it pretty soon. Um, pretty busy on my other channel as well, but uh, I hope to keep you posted on videos like this and uh, other Let's Plays of games I've long played. So yeah, take care guys. I, I think this is going to be quite a fun Let's Play series for me to do. <laughs>